Hi everybody. So today is going to be the first day of the fall training season. I've got like five young horses I need to train and get started under saddle, including Oliver over there. And then I've got um, Miracle from last year's sale video. She's three and a half now, for almost four. And then I've got Sunny, uh, the horse that I sold to Linda, the lady that I've been giving lessons to. I've got um, Isaac's horse to train, uh, Rose's Bay Lady. I've got uh, Jewel, the auction mare that had the baby. I gotta tune her up. So we've got a lot of training coming at you and we're gonna go on a trail ride right now and I'm gonna pony uh, Miracle along with the other horses. So let's go in the barn and I'll introduce you to all the horses that are going along today. But first we gotta feed the babies and get a few things situated. And speaking of feed, look at this haul I made. So <clears throat> everything in the front of the truck here, all the way down to the bottom, I got a tractor supply. Some viewers sent us a bunch of tractor supply gift cards and there is no tractor supply in our local area, but it was still appreciated. So yesterday when I went by, I got this big load of goods and uh, a whole bunch of feeds. So we'll get that unloaded and then we'll go on a trail ride. Thanks for all the support. Okay, everybody, I'm sure you remember Miracle. She's dirty right now, of course. Been out in the pasture. We're gonna do a little bit of groundwork with her, saddle her up, and we're gonna pony her along on the trail ride just to get her some exposure and get her used to carrying a saddle. And I'm gonna do a little groundwork with her first just to get her under control and get her, oh, good girl, she's being sweet already. If you don't know Miracle, we got her last year at the Missouri Trail Horse Auction in Ava, Missouri. You can go back in the videos and watch the auction when we got her, bringing her home, a training session, and her first ride. So this isn't about lunging her or getting her energy out. It's just about kind of getting a little bit of control on her, getting her working and listening to me. That ear's on me right now because I'm talking, so I like the attention she's paying me. They always want to stop towards the other horses. We have the riding horses tied up over there. So just be cognizant of that. And then step in and pull her into you like that. On the opposite side of the riding horses, because it helps you. Uh, it's kind of like, that's where she naturally wants to go anyway. So it's a little bit of a cheat code. You've seen her licking her lips and chewing there. She's. She remembers her lessons from last year, even though I haven't worked with her a lot this year. So I don't have to do much, and then I can bring the saddle in here and introduce it to her. Okay, so for saddling her, since it's been a year, all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave her loose, keep this kind of nearby, and uh, I'm just going to go about it like I do it every day. And if she moves off or runs off, I'm going to send her away so that she learns that that's not the easier thing to do and get her to where she'll stand real still. I'm going to use a big, clunky, heavy saddle. That's not the most comfortable because we're not going to be riding her today. We're just, I just want something that's going to squeak a lot, make a lot of noise, flop around a lot because that'll be good for her on uh, desensitizing her to the weight and everything. Oh, that had to hurt. Didn't mean to hurt her. Buckle kind of clanked her on the other side. Looks like she's going to handle this well, so I'll just show you once we get her all tacked up. Alright, we got her all tacked up now, so now I'm just going to work her just a little bit more in a circle. Let her move with that tack on and get used to it. So all I'm trying to accomplish while working her in this round pen 
is to get her attention on me, to get her to disregard the tack that's on her, and to start to work, like, form a repertoire with her where I know that she's taking cues from me and watch for kind of a calmness to come over. It's important to kind of have intent in your uh, mind because horses can kind of read body language to a point that I believe that they're actually sensing your intent. So I like to always be thinking, like, what does she think that I'm trying to tell her right now? And what would a, in nature, what would this be replicating, like in a herd? So if you're thinking like that, it'll kind of help you learn to read the body language of a horse while we're doing it. You see right there, I was kind of reading that she was being good, so I stepped in and pulled her attention closer to me and then backed off like as a release, and I knew that that would turn her into me. She was a little bit afraid of that flag, so I decided to rub her with it and get her used to it in an advance and retreat kind of way. And uh, she's being pretty good, so I'm not going to do a whole lot more, and then we're going to go out and hit the trails. If you're trying to do this at home and you're wanting to step in and get your horse to pull towards you like I just did, it's important to know where you're focusing your energy and to know where the drive line of the horse is. In the most simplest terms, it's where the girth is on the saddle. If you're putting your pressure at the girth or behind, the horse is going to go forward. If you put your pressure in front of the girth or the shoulder, then you're going to stop your horse or pull it towards you uh, when you back off. So. That's how I do that. So, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people saying that I rushed this because I could have done more groundwork first. But we did a lot of groundwork last year. Basically, this is just an exercise. Let her get a little bit of, get used to it a little bit. But I wasn't too concerned about her freaking out too much. She did a little more than I thought she would because we'd done this quite a bit last year. But there's no harm done. It's just spending time with them. Okay, I think we're ready to go now. Okay, so here's the girls we're gonna be riding. I've got Lucky. Lucky's a little bit smaller than what I like to trail ride, but we're just gonna go on a nice flat trail in probably less than an hour. And in that, I'll give her a break because I want uh, to have a really tr well-trained horse while I pony Miracle. And then of course, Becca's riding her little girl, Ozark. So Linda is gonna be riding Lightning. She's a 2000 model, so she's 23 years old and she was a real good horse in her day and she still is, but she's, she's getting a little old. So we're gonna take it easy today. Not only that, we're taking it easy for Lucky, like I said. On the, when it's not show season, we trail ride our show horses because that's what the Missouri Fox Trotters is the best for. When ponying a young horse, it is my opinion and advice that you do not tie the horse to your saddle horn. I always just do a half hitch and double the rope in my hand where it gives me a mechanical advantage to hang on to it if I want to hang on to it. But if I want to get clear from it, if something goes wrong, I can just drop the rope and she can be loose. I'd rather have a loose horse than get hurt. This pony in them, it's good for a lot of things. It gets them desensitized to the, everything they're going to see on a trail, of course, but it also gets them used to seeing something up above them. And the dogs, you know, we always have a bunch of dogs along with us on a trail ride because they're going to see animals and stuff running everywhere. It's good to get them used to that early on.
Pony is also good for water obstacles and things that would get, cause a horse trouble if you were riding them for the first time. Like this tree down in a steep creek crossing. The old horses do it fine, but it helps to pull the young ones through the first time or two. This right here is a part of my parents' farm. It's, we call it the back brushy field. And we just use it for deer hunting. We got, uh, and hogs, there's a lot of wild boar on this place. So we got shooting lanes. And they go up to, if you can see it up there, that's the deer condo. So uh, got shooting lanes you can see out of there. And come back here and harvest a little bit of our meat and help control the invasive wild boar in this area. They're not native to America and they really do a lot of damage. And actually I can kind of smell some in the air right now. They've got a real strong scent when it's a boar hog and I kind of smell one. So it'd be interesting if there's one back here right now, the dogs will get after it. So this is um, kind of where the creek that goes through my property that we've seen a lot of times, this is kind of where it starts. There's seven springs on my dad's property to be clear, but uh, this is one of the bigger ones. And then there's kind of one more up here that has a spring house, but this is what we kind of consider the start of the spring that runs all year round. How are you guys doing back there? This view right here of Lucky's Head Shake is really kind of interesting and it can show all of the viewers that aren't familiar with the breed of the Missouri Foxtrotter how the head shake is in rhythm with the walk and that head shake is actually using to pump that stride out further and you can see that she's walking while these dogs are trotting. That'll give you a good indication of how fast a Missouri Foxtrotter walks and why the head shake is so important to be in rhythm and to help the stride. Two pretty girls and their riders. <laughs> Back to my parents' farm. Very beautiful. If about another hundred thousand of you hit the subscribe button i may be able to afford to buy this from them someday so if you want to do your part click the subscribe button and ring the bell right now creek we were talking about. Walk, babe. So for those of you who don't know, our property and Jared's parents' property are connected. We're the farm right in front of them. They actually have to drive through our farm to get to theirs. So right across the pond here is the property line that connects our farms together. And then this is the road, uh, this is their driveway. And as soon as you go through the pillars, then you'll be on our homestead. JR has always loved his parents' farm, and when we were able to purchase the property in front of their farm seven years ago, it was definitely a dream come true for him. And before we end this video, we want to make sure to say congratulations to JR's dad. For those of you who don't know, he has a YouTube channel also. It's called Rosa Stringworks. 
and he just hit a hundred thousand subscribers uh, he's worked very hard to get there so congratulations jerry we're very excited for you if you've never checked Jerry's channel out, make sure you do. Again, it's called Rosa Stringworks. Since 1983, he has built and repaired musical instruments. He is one of the best luthiers you will find. This is actually one of his mandolins he's built. And then in a second, you'll see a guitar, and he built that guitar also. He is starting to slow down on builds and repairs, uh, but he also is putting out a lot of videos on projects he does around the farm. He's a very talented man, uh, so I think you'll really enjoy his channel. He has a a lot of videos up uh, so you can go back over the years and watch those and of course we have to say a few thank yous from folks sending items from our amazon wish list which is just a fun way to support our channel and you can find the link in the description of this video uh, first up this actually had no note but i wanted to say thank you to whoever sent it anyways leather conditioner cleaner is definitely needed around here keeping all of this tack that we have clean and Doreen sent some zinc oxide for feather care for Oliver, so thank you very much, Doreen. And then Samson sent a spray bottle of zinc oxide. And we did use this a few times on Oliver's feather, and um, he had a couple sores at that point. Nothing bad or major, just a couple tiny ones. But since using this, they have completely um, gone away, the little scab sores. Uh, so not saying it was 100% this, because we have done other things too, but it may have played a part in the process. So thank you so much, Samson. And Good April Mary sent our April. oldest daughter, Mary, these muck boots, which she absolutely loved. So thank you so much, April. We sure appreciate it. And maybe we can get her to muck out some stalls with these. <laughs> kind of doubt it, but we'll try. And I'm definitely running behind on getting thank yous out to you all. Um, these were from earlier this summer, and they were sent from Kristen for a fly patrol on our homestead. Thank you very much, Kristen. And David sent a dewormer, uh, so thank you very much, David. These definitely get put to use around here. And Deborah sent a hook for our tack room. If I ever get around to it, we're going to kind of redo the tack room just a bit and make it a little bit um, more convenient and easy to use. So this will be used once we do that. Thank you very much, Deborah. And April sent this awesome misting cooling system. Uh, we're going to use this for Oliver. We got it just like a couple weeks too late, uh, but this is going to be so nice next year when it gets really hot we actually have a friend who put one of these up for their horses and they absolutely loved them so thank you very much april uh, i got it stored away for next summer mm -hmm. 